Let's get ready to humble. Like we always do when a humble indie bundle is out, and this is Humble Indie Bundle 6 coming with five games. Not six just yet, but we also talk about Ubuntu unveiling a brilliant Amazon ad campaign while doing damage control. How does this work out and how does it affect our Linux gaming community? All that and more on this week's Linux Gamecast Weekly. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers news, reviews, interviews. That's coming up, not this episode, but shortly, and basically, whatever else in the hell we come up with. And as always, my inimitable co-host, Jordan, Dr. C, Hi. because I can pronounce his last name. How are you things can't, going? And, and no one can. No one can. That's no why you're a mystery. See, see, if anyone can pronounce my last name correctly, I get sent back to the fifth dimension. Ah. And I just, don't, I just don't want that, so. Now, here's a fun question. What if you properly enunciate um, Alex Trebek's name backwards. What happens? I think they tried that on an actual episode of Jeopardy. In fact, I'm almost positive they did. And nothing happened, much uh, to my dismay. That's sad. Very so, sad. Seriously, man. What's new with you? Anything fun in the world of your Fedora projecting? Uh, no. Not really. Um... I have been given a month to get something cool working with my Pi, so that's about it. But I don't yeah, think anybody has a problem making cool things work with their Pi. Probably not, but I just have to come up with something unique and interesting. Well, and that's the hard part. What do you part. think about There's the turbo button? The turbo button. Eh. There, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with overclocking it to solid 1.0. It can run stably with that. Yeah, I, I'd do it. Right on, right on. I, I don't think I'd do it on that one because it doesn't belong to me, but on like my own personal one, I'd do it. Yeah, well, I don't see any issue with that. But we're here, and we do one thing half-assed. And on top of that, we also do um, Linux gaming news. But before we get into that, this is something mildly related to Linux gaming news and, well, Ubuntu will now have Amazon ads pre-installed. And it doesn't affect me at all because I use Fedora. Aw, yeah. Why do you gotta be hating on the Ubuntu, man? Because brown is the color of poo. Well, you do know that this Linux Gamecast episode is all about the games. Maybe not necessarily Ubuntu, but the games. It's all about the games. And that's cool. Let's jump back to this. This is something that might not affect a lot of people, but scheduled to be released next month. Ubuntu 12.10, you got to keep in mind, it's still in beta will feature Amazon ads. And I'm taking... You couldn't find a way to port this to um, Fedora, right? Oh, yes, because I want Unity running on all my machines. I guess that's uh, a fair point. I mean, you need Unity to see this um, train wreck. Mm-hmm. But I have seen some examples. Um, Chris Fisher... And uh, Matt Harley, they did a thing, mm -hmm. spooled it up in a VM, and it really does work as you would expect. If you type in um, terminal through that lens, T-E-R-M, your bottom result doesn't say, hello, advertisements, it says recommended suggestions, and uh, they're completely inappropriate. Completely inappropriate? Well, uh, that's... maybe they're slightly appropriate. There's no connection. Nah, so, from what I understand, this is just supposed to be like, 
your results when you search for things are supplemented with Amazon stuff. Right. It kind of reminds me of the GNOME 3 feature where, like, if you search for something that is not installed on your computer, it'll take you to a Google search. But that's a bit less overt. I think a um, big ignored issue is you can't make money on the desktop. At least not yet. nobody's tried to do that. I mean... Well, uh, I mean... Why try to sell something to users that they can get for free? I mean, with, like, supports uh, for, like, the server space, that's okay, a different uh, story. Jordan, you got to stop right there. I mean, that's a brilliant point. I mean, who else is trying to do this? I mean, and guess what? Now, I, I guess I should say, I mean, when this was first announced, I said, that, oh, man, this is genuinely a PR nightmare. It's not a bad thing in Genesis. Now, is it I mean, just putting Amazon ads in? Not really. Like, if, if, if it's not intrusive and more or less harmless, then really there's no, there, there's no big issue about it. it. It's just a matter of people wanting this feature at all. But then we I mean, tab like, over to Amazon search results on the dash, and we have... Ah, quote unquote, don't trust us, question mark. Um, we have root. Mark, don't trust us. Shuttleworth. Well, yeah, don't what, trust what? us, question mark. That is his quote. Don't trust us, um, we have root. What the hell does that even mean, anyways? Well, I'll tell you what this means is um, Ubuntu has a really shite. Um, the art department, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm a firm pastafarian. I don't believe in betting. Right. How stupid were they doing this? I mean, they could have migrated this PR disaster, which they're going to be doing cleanup for this for probably the next month. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the 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 way that response is worded is probably he, he seems to be taking a very flippant uh, a very flippant attitude on um, on all the all the complaints. Would you say that's a because f you that's why type of response? So I don't know. I'm not a Marshall Worth's head. I need a I need a couple more billion dollars to do that. <laughs> Man. You know, that's kind of it. Uh, uh, yeah, that's... At, at the end of the day, I mean, you, you do have... I'm not shilling out Fedora. I'm shilling out anyone else who has a server product and they use that to pay for the desktop implementations. And at the end of the day, that's what it pays for. Now, uh, is it... Or are they trying to find a new way to make money on the desktop? Because traditionally, that's, you know, you don't make money on the desktop, period. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, I guess time will tell here. If it works, it works. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. I mean... I, I think they could have... Um, they definitely could have handled the PR a lot better, though. Yeah, yeah, suffered a lot better, more lack of blowback by consulting. Hell, even as simple at the top of the article, by the way, you can turn this off if you want, would have been enough to sate most people. Right. Well, all right, here's something I'm thinking. I was like, what if they made it? Now, you got to keep in mind, 1210 still in beta, right? Mm-hmm. What if they'd rocked into this thing, it's opt-in as opposed to opt-out? See, I think that would have gotten a lot better reception. I think I think if you give people a choice of saying, well, we're trying out this new thing to monetize Ubuntu, um, you can try it if you want. If you don't, don't bother. That that would have been that I think that would have been like the best PR move to do that. Maybe don't maybe don't force it on the users right away. Maybe ease into it, warm people up to the idea. Bingo. And, and 
I mean, I mean, I mean, if if you can say one thing about Linux users, they hate change. I wouldn't say change so much, but they're also smart enough to smell out some bad PR. And here's something yeah. that you know. They shouldn't have to worry about all this, but they did it to themselves. Individuals are intelligent human beings, but group mob mentality, they're quite daft. Would you not agree with that? Oh, yeah. And what we're dealing with right now is mob mentality. Mob mentality. They well, have... it, 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 it could be a pretty, like, the, the whole ads thing is pretty incendiary as it is. So, yeah, a lot of people would be swept up in the mob mentality. I'm not the biggest Ubuntu fan in the world. Shocker. But, um, you know what? I'm curious to see where this goes. I'm right on with that. So, let's go screeching in to something that we do. Screeching. And what do we do? Linux Steam Update of the Week. Wee, oh, wee, well, I better wee. get over here to that. That is our Linux Steam update of the week, as Jordan so eloquently put it. Steam for Linux will fully support the big picture mode. Do you know what the hell the big picture is? Yes, I do. I've tried it out just out of raw curiosity. Cause oh, I'm really? Only... How does it work? I've not had a chance. So the whole idea, it's just like a controller optimized Steam interface. You, 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 you would set up like a PC in front of a TV, and then, like, for games that have couch multiplayer, like, I don't know, trying off the top of my head, uh, you, you could just, like, use a Xbox controller or a Logitech controller, like, this, to control your Steam and queue up game and play games and whatnot. Um... So do you think and, this is um, something they're working on for the Steam box, or just like a precursor? Possibly. I, I Like I said, I tried it out, actually. Um, in its current state, it's not stable. And I kind of don't like it, but I can see where they're coming from uh, from a design perspective. So I'm saying my distaste for it is more of a personal preference thing. Do you think it's aimed more at the vegetative peons. Yes, the the unwashed console masses, the as un you so like to put it. As opposed to the glorious gaming PC master race. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, is that what you're saying? It sound cool. Yeah. I, I, I think it's supposed to appeal to more console gamers, yes, the unwashed console masses. Right. Um, but at least yeah. that's out, so let's just rock it on and get real with this story here. Gerard's mm -hmm. Games Talk 3D is open sourced, man, as you can see here. They've already set up a Git repository. No SVN for you. Git. Oh, just God, I love Git. Git. You remember CVS way back in the day? Oh, I saw it. I remember my last job, I actually had to administer a CBS server. That was that fun. That sounds miserable. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you know what? I have equal distaste for. Uh, what's it? Mercurial. That's the other uh, one I don't like. You know, I'm cutting my teeth on Mercurial, but here we are. We have um, Garage Games. They're out, but here's the fun thing: it's already out, and less than 24 hours, it's been forked. And it's Fork called 3D. Fork 3D. I, I think that's actually rather clever. It's stupid, but I like it. I think we have a Blue Raja on our hands. A Blue Raja. He does one thing and one thing well. And it's not shoveling. Mm-hmm. No, Al, you could even say the entire mystery men team conforms to the sort of uh, Unix mentality of do one thing well. Stretch goal, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Fantastic. But that's out. Um, maybe we'll see some fun games. I mean, um, Talk 3D was responsible for, if you remember, Tribes 2. Mm -hmm. Which I never played. 
Did you ever play Tribes? Tribes 2. I played it on the Play... Was it out on PlayStation? I don't even remember. PlayStation 2. I, re- I remember there was a Tribes game on PS2, and I played that. I'm not sure if I rem- I'm not sure if I played Tribes 2. Uh-huh. Right on. Screeching to that. We need to get to our real topic. Real topic. The real topic. You know, since we're not selling spoons, knives, forks, or anything like that. Forks with cues. Forks with cubes. How about black cubes? Black cubes. Mm. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Guess what? It is time to get ready to humble. And not (sighs) live in a crazy psychopathic um, sky wizard way. But, more importantly, this is the humble indie bundle type of way. We have six (laughs) games. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, kind of. We have Dust Force. How do you go with Rokal? Roshard. Roshard. Shadow, but, Spaz, Torchlight, and Vessel with an asterisk. And we'll get to that in a moment. Mm-hmm. So, here's the thing. Um, I'm doing Ubuntu. And we set this up about a week ago. I'm doing mm-hmm. Ubuntu. 1204 LTS, 32-bit, here at LGC, Headquarters mm-hmm. of Awesomeness, and you are running... 64-bit Fedora 17. Which... Up in up in the LGC Canadian branch office in Yukon. Yes. Infinitely superior to Arch. Well, uh, I'm I'm not one to play Distro Wars, but we should talk about how fun it was getting these games working. Yeah, so, let's see, so, where are we at? Right here, let's scroll down through. Um, now, first, we need to talk about our system specs. Yes. And I think, Jordan, so, you're first, because... I, I guess I am. I'm, I'm running these games on a ThinkPad T430. Uh, it's running... I. When I bought it, I customized the hell out of it. So I got a i5, 3320M, 16 gigs of uh, DDR3, an NBS5400 with a gig of DDR5 RAM, and two hard drives, a 120 gig solid state drive where all the applications lie, and a 500 gig drive for all the files. Now, that sounds like a pretty nice system, man. I bought it, and I love it. And because it's a ThinkPad, I have literally dropped this from a significant height while running. It's a Lenovo, it not fine. a ThinkPad. Lenovo. It, they, no, they own the ThinkPad name. It says ThinkPad on the thing. Well, it's made by Lenovo. Made by Lenovo. IBM sold them. You know how it uh, works. IBM still owns like 30% of them, though, so it's all good. So, for me, um, kind of desktopy. And I'm reading from the show notes because they're dead honest. Um, some MSI motherboard that was on sale at the time. AMD 640 quad core, 3 gigahertz, 5 gigs of, um, imagine this, DDR2 RAM, which is apparently made out of gold press latinum. Oh, you're telling me. NVIDIA 560Ti 2, and that's how I record the games with no dropout. OCZ technology, 200 gig, SSD, internal, and Ubuntu 12.04 LTS. So that gets us started on our humble bundle adventure. Does that sound right? Where, where we play all the things, says. It says. Jordan's not kidding. That's in the show notes with the picture that is, of the that, clean that, guy. That is. Yeah, there, there's the that things. lovely little caricature of Ali Brosh with the broom and the this stuff. So, we're going to start off with Dust Force. Let's see if we can pull up the um, Force of Dustiness here. Now, this game's kind of neat, man. Um, yes. And you- when I say kind of neat, it's... It's just... It's, it's, Got its own thing going on. Mm-hmm. But, it, it, did you try to play this without a gamepad? 
I did, and then I read the note that said, play it with the gamepad. <laughs> because when I originally saw this game played, a friend of mine was playing it in a computer lab at the college for which I work. Uh, he was using a keyboard and mouse, but, or he was using a keyboard, but he was doing it weird. He had his arms crossed. So I tried doing that, and that didn't work out too well. So I think you I got it next time I try to play this game. taped upside up down to a ceiling. No, yeah, it's, the way he did it was weird, but, um... It, so it's doable rationale. with a keyboard? Yeah, like, like this, like this. His rationale, and it actually kind of makes sense, is that he's used to having the, um... Unlike uh, on like a gamepad, you're used to having the 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 analog stick or the or the D-pad on the left hand side and the buttons on the right hand side. So you still get to keep that. You're just crossing your arms. Have you tried playing it with just a keyboard? Wait, sorry, with just the what? Have you tried playing it with just a keyboard? With just a keyboard? Yeah. Yeah. It's not fun. It's you. You definitely need a controller. I, yeah, I, you I agree have a controller. That. Let's see yours. I'll show you mine. Oh. Logitech. Logitech, um, I say dual hack controllers. Yes, it is a dual action something or other that I bought for $25 at the time that has... Now, why don't you get off my lawn while I show everyone my Logitech controller, which is no action, no hats. Single keypad. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Four, six, seven. How many is that? Four, four five, six, nine button controller. Made of adamantium. Made of adamantium? Yes. So did you try playing it with your controller, which I'm guessing, by the way, if you buy Logitech, um, we're not getting any plugs for this. They kind of just work, period. Out of yeah. the box. I, I, I usually default to Logitech for the bulk of my peripherals just because, I mean, for, for the price and for the quality... I, I don't see a problem with it. Um, but no, I didn't play Dust Force with a controller because while I was futzing around in the game, I neglected to read the note you sent me about playing it with a controller. And only after the fact did I realize, well, that could have gone a lot better if I had listened to you. So there's your ego stroking for the week. Well, to be fair with you, man, I mean... It's a fun game. It's a platformer. It is, oh, it's it's but really it's a fun. button masher. It's one of those games that is a if you hit enough buttons, it makes you look good. Period. I mean, it's a reward generator. Mm -hmm. I think some people like to say. But up next in a humble indie bundle, we have Maurice Rochard. Requel Games Rochard Rochard. So what's this game about, man? Um, well, you tell me. I could not get it running. Wow. It's I, a... I, I have been bashing my head against it for a while. And, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, that's Shatter. No, Rochard, um, Rochard, I also couldn't get working. Uh, Rochard crashed on the opening cinematic. Now, it hung for me with the opening cinematic. But after a restart, it played right. I mean, it genuinely looked like it was using the CPU for GL rendering. But after oh. a restart, it played just fine. Interesting. I'm, I, I haven't taken down the system yet, so I might have to try that. That seems like a release. I don't know. That seems like a daft thing. I mean, this is um, from Unity, by the way. It's using mm -hmm. Mono, which... You know, it's part of Unity 4.0. It's using mono bytecode. You know, that is, you know, all the game logic. You got to use that um, to point out how the, it's built. Right. And you seem to have an issue with that. No, I, I don't have a personal issue with that. Um, it's a Linux issue? Yes, I do, because mono's on its way out of Linux. That's true, I guess. So, but somebody's going to pick it up, is my so, guess. So, someone's going to have to pick it up if people want to continue developing for it. Yeah, well, if Unity is coming over, somebody will. I, you know, no. I don't know if it ships with... Of course it ships with its own bits of mono. It's ASM. 
Um, mm-hmm. Fun game. Check it out. Reminds me a bit of Trine. You know, if you get it up and running, I'm seeing your notes. I mean, it just freezes. I guess you never went back. No, I, 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 I actually, uh, I actually tried a couple times to huh. get it running. Uh, I didn't reboot the system because I, di- I did have to kill the X server a couple times, and eventually I'm just like, oh, I'll, I'll figure this out later. And maybe, maybe it's. I, it also dawned on me that it could be an issue with the binary, and that might be fixed. But no. I'll, I'll definitely give the reboot thing a try. So let's move on to our favorite game of these series. It's Shadow. And what Shatter. they have up here is the PlayStation Network release trailer. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we now have Flash being able to play while we're doing everything else. But I heard you loved Shadow. It was probably the most compatible out of oh, all the yeah. games on Fedora 64-bit. <clears throat> Shipping with 32-bit binaries and no 64-bit binaries. Is that anything the... new, though? Well, I mean, uh, a couple of the other Humble games came with 64-bit clients. Norm- normally, with 32-bit clients, I don't have an issue. But, um... So for Actually, Ubuntu sure. users, is sure there anything is like um, 32-bit compat libs or anything like that for Fedora? Oh yeah, yeah. You you can you can install you can install i686 compiled uh, libraries. That, that, that's not the issue. Um, actually, I'm not even sure what the issue is anymore. Well, I was uh, hearing you know earlier from you. We were talking back and forth. Um, it was not um Chown. It was um. Well, it, 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 it was an ownership issue, and possibly my using Bumblebee took into NVIDIA Optimus additionally causes problems with that. Hmm. But no, now now I just get. Uh, Did you actually... get it to play something? No. Nine. 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 The um. The uh, it crashes when I run it when I when I execute the binary. Um, I found I found exactly two Google results on it. One was a Debian forum in German which had no replies, and the other one was an Arch forum referencing the Debian forum asking what was up. You gotta say the magic word, please. Arch, Arch, Yarch. Yarch. Which we also represent the um, National Pirate Day. Sorry, we didn't catch that. Well, I guess maybe... I don't even know what a Somalian accent sounds like. Yeah. Don't shoot. (laughs) (laughs) Oops. But we have that. Shattered PS. It's a fun game, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you can't get it installed, especially outside of Ubuntu... Now, this is something I want to tap you on here is, um, you know Steam's coming, right? Yes. Even, I mean, you know me, you know Steam's coming. Yes, Steam uh, is coming. Yeah, it's a, um, it, 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 it's like winter. It's just coming. You that was never a quote in Game of Thrones. No, winter is coming but- is a misnomer. Go look but it up. I, I, I'm, ac- I'm actually, I haven't actually started reading uh, the Song of Ice and Fire series yet. I'm waiting for the next season to end before I go into the books. That way, don't I can get read the books. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. What we got to nerd out about other stuff somewhere. <laughs> so but yes, Steam is coming. So Steam. you know, you can install the humble indie bundle bits with this. I mean, package. Issues, you know, I was talking to, um, earlier today, Chris Fisher. He wrote back, he's like, hey man, I installed everything under Ubuntu Software Center and it worked out fine. And I, my, I had to write back and I said, how's that gonna work when you don't want to use Ubuntu? I mean, we're gonna get Steam keys for these. <laughs> and that, that's kind of the brilliant point about, you know, the, Humble Indie Bundle. Now, I really wish you guys had had supported Tessera, you know, 
since you started doing that, but he didn't do that, and he didn't keep on doing that. But either or, man. Good games. Fun stuff. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get this one running, but up next we need to get a little twitchy about it. A little spazzy, if you will? I don't know. Would it be spazzy? Spaz. Space pirates S and zombies. Makes you want to buy it, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, we're checking out the trailer space. video right now. It's so got, you got this one up and running. No wish. It, it's, it's got pirates, it's got zombies, it's got space. Now, and according to the loading screen, bounty hunters as well now. Yeah. What more could you want? Well, the one thing I liked about this, and we kind of glossed over it, and by glossed over it, I mean we didn't even mention it, is it's one of the few games that doesn't run the... And I can't find... Nix installer? Yes, the Nix installer. Thank you. That's why we have a Jordan. Because I remember stupid pedantic stuff. He's awesome like that. And don't anyone say otherwise. Or I'll make disparaging remarks about your mother. Personally. It'll be nasty business. But uh, yes, installers. We were we were talking about installers. Well, uh, keep on rocking on with Spaz right quick. Um, yeah. But at yeah, its Spaz. core, Space Pirates and Zombies sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. Action-based, skill-oriented, top-down, and it's one of those games that reminded me of Fetch and Grab, which... That's not my dice, man. I mean, I, is that your dice? Uh, sometimes. I haven't really given much time to Space Pirates and Zombies because uh, there, there is another game related to the bundle that came out um, recently that I guess we'll get to when we get to it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it looks pretty cool. I'll, I, I'm actually going to have to give it some serious playtime to see whether I like it or not. That's cool. I mean, I would like somebody who's um, genuinely into that to give it playtime, to give feedback, because I play that. I was like, I get it. I have no issues with it. I get it, but it's just not my dice, man. Is that well, fair to say? With, with, with a game like Space Pirates and Zombies, how can I resist? Uh, fair enough, fair enough. So to roll this out, um, I believe I had one comment in the show notes, didn't I? You did. Yeah. Uh, it was, um, Torchlight is now released as part of the Humble Indie Bundle 6, right? Yay! And that's a complete lie. Is it? Yeah. In the show notes, I just said MF and Torchlight. Exclamation point. Hey, I got it running out of the box with no real issues aside from missing faces, but... You know, I've seen the missing faces issue, man. I didn't see it with the, um... I don't know, the installation I did under 32-bit. Ubuntu, mm. I, I didn't have any issues. But, um... Yeah, did you get any gamepad support working? That was one of the questions. Now, I'm going to be the first person to tell you, why in the world would you ever want to use a gamepad for this? Yeah, I, I why, why would I, I? I play it like I played Diablo, just point and click. Right. Up next, let's play Borderlands 2 with a gamepad. I, yes. Let's play any first-person shooter with a gamepad. That's, that's... Yeah, that's sketchy, uh, man. All in its own thing. Um, have you played the game before? Torchlight? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I've never uh, played Torchlight before. I mean, I know Torchlight 2 just came out. Which um, I have been addicted to for the past couple of days. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Um, I've never played the original Torchlight. Um, what is it about, man? I mean, new... So, it's, it's, it's by the same guys who did Diablo. And it plays pretty... It plays like an improved version of Diablo. Uh, and in Torchlight, when you got the three classes, you got the you got the ranged guy, you got the caster person, and then you get the then you get the big meaty guy, and you run around. So you got the tank, engines, the magician, um, and the alchemist. archer. And in in this case, it's an alchemist. All right. And uh, yeah, but you get a weasel, man. And, I I did get the weasel. The weasel, the yeah. weasel is great. I love the weasel. It's a. It's I don't a know player. what he does, but. 
Well, so, wow, awesome. you're, you really haven't played Torchlight. So basically, like, the pet follows you around, and you can also, like, offload your inventory on it. sell stuff. Hmm. In the middle of a dungeon, which is terrific. Um, but yeah, no, it's Torchlight. It's great. The fact that it has a Linux client. Hell, the fact that Torchlight 2 is based on more or less the same engine as Torchlight 1 gives me extreme hope that in an indie bundle coming soon, we're going to get Torchlight 2 in there. No, I think that's a bit of optimism. I think they'll probably just go directly to Steam. Possibly. Either way, the prospect of Torchlight 2 on Linux tickles me pink. Well, it tickles me pale. Pale. In but a good yes, way. In a very but, happy, fun but, pale way. In a very happy pale way. But yes, Torchlight on Linux, it's great. Love it. I liked it. Um, I didn't have any issues with it outside of the um installer. Ah, yes. So n now we're going to talk about installers? No, I'm not going to go into no. that too far. I'm just saying. Um, ah. I think it's... A, Enix. Is that how you enunciate it? How would you enunciate it? I, you, you have it written down as Nix Installer. I didn't pay attention to what the installer was called. Nix Installer. What did you have? Uh, what do you mean what did I have? Did you see it in another form? Oh, uh, no, but I think it's called Nix Installer. Yeah. I, I, I just wasn't paying attention to what it was called when... I have no direct I'd... issue with it other than, um... I like to install things to my home partition by default. Mm -hmm. Now, next installer wants to do a system-wide install. Okay? Right. Are you... I'm not against system-wide installs. I, like, personally, I toss everything under opt. That's just my deal. All right. Now, for me personally, I like to put everything under home because I like to keep them. Mm. So, um... I'm one of those OCD nerds who has every single major root directory under its own partition, so... <laughs> right on, man. Yeah. Uh, that's why you're my friend. Ha! <laughs> uh, here's the thing. The next installer wants to default system one install, and you go, nine... There's a go, right? Mm hmm The next step is you need to define um, where your home partition is. That's fine. I can live with that. Then after that, oh, where's the bin directory? Yeah, that was a bit stupid. I don't know. And I was like, hey. oh, if I was a betting man, it was probably under that first directory that I had to type out with them, forward slash, home, bin, no. desktop, um... No, they, they 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 want it so that it's they they want it isolated so that it's in your path. Do they so want that it? You can just it run sounds it from like the they need line. it. They need it in your path. Yeah, they need it under user local or else. <laughs> they gonna die. The of us all. Man, um, our last game. Guess what? Our last game doesn't exist. Doesn't exist yet. Dion Free plus Steam Unlock Code. Try the demo. Good luck with that. I even told Jordan's, ah, play it under wine, man. Play it under wine? He I threw played. things at me all the way from Canada. Ah, all the way from Canada. Nasty. I think business. I chucked a beaver at him, too. And a Labatt Blue, which I caught. Yeah, I didn't really like it, but. So that's that's funny. Released. You think that was Labatt Blue? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> it's hard to tell the difference. Yeah, it is. But at the end of the day, here's what um this HIB six got released on Tuesday, I believe. Is that right? Um, right I think around. so. And when they first launched this, if you click the asterisk, you know, so when this game getting released. They would say, and I'm quoting our copy-pasty here, we will be getting Vessel out to bundle buyers as soon as possible, 24 to 72 hours. Yeah, um, things changed, man. It's like that scene from Snatch. You said two minutes, five minutes ago. 
Yeah, well, I'm not going to quote Snatch, but yes. So, right now, as we stand as the recording of this at 11.36 Eastern Standard Time. In the post-meridian. We will be getting a vessel out to bundle buyers as soon as possible. So do you think they cock something up? Or? I'm not sure. Um, maybe they were porting it and Do you think it was they... a horrible Fedora users? Just messing with everything? Oh, definitely. These damn Fedora users, they've just ruined all good things. Yeah. They're the worst. All the things. All the things. All the things! But that is coming out, hopefully, in short order. Hopefully. Hopefully. And we got to make this and real quick, because we're going to pretend, just for the sake of us, that, um, you know what I heard runs Linux? What? The TARDIS. Wrong. The TARDIS runs TARDIX. GNU TARDIX. The hell is GNU TARDIX? Or GNU plus TARDIX. Is this some fancy wizard moon speak, you say? It's the Gallifreyan standard Unix distribution. I don't know. God damn it, Canadian. I can't read Gallifreyan. Don't you know <laughs> that? Well, that's your problem. It's our second language. Ah, <sighs> curse you. So you might want to cut this off before we do the outro, but we're about to do the outro. Um, then we're going to continue on with maybe a um, Linux non-related um, Doctor Who discussion, which is awesome. why you should watch us live. Yes. But we'll get into that. You don't want to watch us live. It's terrible. It's... There's swearing and nudity and all of it's mine. There's Jordan boobies everywhere. It's kind of neat. I like it. Ben, ben seems to think so. Yeah. So, Jordan, um, we can check out Dr. Seawing, the massive wing, uh, the burning fool. Hit him up at the Twitterverse with a thumbs in his face. And Captain Retard himself in full HD 720p. That's me. That's Vin Stone. Clever. Oh, you got disguised. a promotion. As always, under Vin Stone. You can also find us at linuxgamecast.com. Check out our YouTubes, forward slash linuxgamecast, and download us on the iTunes. Have you checked us out on the iTunes, Jordan? No. Yeah, we have HD and SD video, man. Do you know how horrible we look in that? I can see myself in the mirror, so yes. Ditto on that one. And... Also available at linksgamecast.com, regular podcast feeds, MP3, SD, HD, and all that fun bits. And do you know what I'd like to do next week? What is that? Recreate this train wreck yet again. Do you think we can do it? Cue the music! Wow! <laughs>